Uh, my name is Sanjeev Nair. I'm a cloud solution architect uh, at Microsoft focused on data and AI. Um, today, I thought I'll bring you a video uh, which can help you get up to speed quickly on an all-in-one analytics solution which Microsoft recently released. Uh, it's currently in preview. It's called Microsoft Fabric. So uh, here is a little uh, learning tutorial about Microsoft Fabric. In a sense, uh, if you were to look at uh, the article, what Microsoft Fabric is all about is it's 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 pretty much combines everything you need for analytics, like whether it's data warehousing, lake house, BI features, everything into one single SaaS product. So uh, if you really look at it, like most of the enterprises you work with deal with large volumes of structured, semi-structured, unstructured data. And typically to make sense of this, you would build either a data warehouse or a lake house on the data. Uh, or sometimes you may just want to do some kind of data engineering work where you want to perform, let's say, a large scale big data transformation, or let's say you want to you know, move data from one location to the other and do some kind of ETL transformation, or maybe you just want to do data science. You want to build and deploy and operationalize machine learning models easily. Or you may also want to do real-time analytics, right? So uh, on, on, let's say, do, uh, data coming from devices such as IoT. So what, uh, in a sense, if you go through this article, uh, we, Microsoft is coming up with uh, this product called Fabric, which combines all of that into one single product, all provided to you as a SaaS offering. There are two things I love about Fabric. One, it's a SaaS product. And what does that mean? So uh, Microsoft is all about easy to use. It's extremely easy to get up and running to do any kind of analytics task. Uh, and it's all based on, guess what? Power BI. So this is what I would call taking self-service BI to the next level. And the second thing which I really like about uh, Fab Fabric is this idea of one lake, which is basically a tenant wide store for data with no requirement for upfront provisioning. What, is I, what do I mean by that? So typically, if you were to do any kind of data engineering work, you have to spin up a data lake, you have to spin up your Spark clusters, right? Even if it's a past service, there's multiple steps to go through it. This is all kind of inbuilt. And then one lake also offers the feature called shortcut, where let's say if you have data setting in AWS, GCP, or anywhere, you can simply create a shortcut and mount the data to uh, within one lake and make it available. I mean, it has to be in a Delta format, but even if it's in a parquet format, you can just simply copy the file over and then make it available in that one lake. It's really, really cool. So a few things I love about it, like I said before, one is it's a SaaS product, two, it combines everything, right? All of the data analytics into one single product. And then three, this idea of one lake where you don't really have to copy data around, data can live where it is, and you can surface that data and build whether a data warehouse or lake house or do data engineering or, or data science all in one single platform. So let's just go in and dive a little bit deeper into uh, into what uh, into this product here. To get started with Microsoft Fabric, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Power BI instance. So essentially you just have to go to Microsoft uh, or PowerBI.com and that takes you to the Power BI instance. And once you come in here, the first thing you will have to do is create a Power BI workspace. So as I said, everything, data analytics, Fabric, uh, which is included in Fabric, can all be interacted through uh, the Power BI interface, which you are quite used to. So uh, first I'm gonna come into my workspace and create a new workspace, and I'm gonna call it Fabric Demo. Uh, with some with my name so that you know uh, just to ensure that it is not there earlier um, i'm just going to create a, this new workspace so once i come to this new workspace there's a whole bunch of things i could do the best way to look at what's available is by looking at 
what you can create from uh, this new Power BI interface. As you could see, you can do uh, data engineering, you could do data factory, which is essentially around, you know, if you were to copy data from one location to the other, this is exactly what data factory uh, used to provide within uh, Azure. Uh, which was also similar to what Azure Synapse Pipeline used to have. Then you can also do data science in terms of uh, creating machine learning models, experimentation. Uh, you can create your data warehouse as well as Power BI and real-time analytics. All of that combined into one single product, all available as a SaaS service, just like how you would work with Power BI. So now I'm really interested in creating a lake house. So I'm just going to create and say, uh, this is my demo lake house. And I'm just going to create uh, this lake house. So essentially, when we think about lake houses, lake house is an architectural pattern which combines the power of data lakes, which can store large volumes of structured and unstructured data with the traditional data warehouses, which were really meant for uh, querying relational data. So uh, uh, essentially, like you, you are keeping the data in a data lake, right? In 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 let's say delta or parquet format, and then surfacing that in uh, in a pure data warehouse kind of experience. So, uh, in Microsoft Fabric, you can create lake house in any premium tier workspace which you have, uh, and that's what I just created. So now the next step I want to do is I want to be able to load some data into this data warehouse. Uh, sorry, the lake house. Created this uh, lake house. Uh, the next thing I really want to do is get data into my lake house. So there are a few ways in which you could do it, right? I could, um, you know, bring the data using this idea of a shortcut, right? So uh, it says new shortcut. And if you look on the left side, you see two things, right? You see files and you see tables. And both places you have this thing called a shortcut. So what is a shortcut? So shortcuts in Microsoft One Lake allow you to unify all your data across domains and clouds by creating a single virtualized data lake for your entire enterprise. So essentially when I create this new shortcut, right? So either it can be in this file place space or in the table space, I could point to an external data source which is sitting either in ADLS Gen 2 or S3 or maybe in the future, it's gonna we're going to add uh, GCP or a whole bunch of other locations. But idea is you're not really copying the data. You're just pointing to where the data is. And permissions and credentials are all managed by one lake. So the fabric experience doesn't need to separately configure and connect to each of the data sources. And so that's how you get the data. And then I also said there's two um, uh, folders here, the files table and the tables folder. And this will become more clear as I kind of load data into files and how it kind of surfaces surfaces it as a table. So when I go to my files, the first thing uh, in this case I'm going to do is I'm going to copy some uh, data over. Uh, let's say uh, in this case I got a I got a CSV file and a Parquet file just to show you a couple of examples. One is a dimension table, uh, uh, sorry, uh, a customer dimension table, and the other one is 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 a um, table around some diabetic data. So what I'm going to do is I'm I want to be able to load this data into my data lake. So in this case, I'm going to take a, an easy approach uh, uh, to kind of start with is to upload the files into this folder. So I'm just going to go and then uh, click on this uh, dim dimension customer table, and then I'm just going to say upload the, upload the file. So it uploaded it. I'm also going to show you another parquet file, which is around some diabetic data, and I'm just going to upload that as well. And uh, let's see if uh, it, just, it just uploaded. And then once I just refresh the screen here, it's supposed to kind of show this table on the on the left side. So. I have it right now in my files location, uh, which is where, which is kind of like a raw storage where the data uh, uh, came in. And now let's say, for instance, I have this uh, tables directory and I'm just going to drag and drop this file into this tables folder. So, and I'm just going to call it a uh, customer, you know, uh, just to keep it as a simple name. I just 
loaded that, that table into the in, into the uh, it's kind of loading at this point. Basically, what it's doing at this point is uh, it, it's it's displaying the data in in a delta format and making it available in a delta format, queryable with any kind of notebook or whatnot uh, from uh, from this uh, analytics experience right here. So if I were to just um, uh, Uh, it, it just appeared as a customer table right here. And I can just open this up in a notebook experience right away. Uh, for instance, if I, uh, I were to say, if I were to process this data using some kind of Spark SQL or any syntax like that, or further do any kind of ETL or large scale data processing, I can simply spin up a note notebook experience and then uh, I can just, you know, like let's say simply drag and drop this here and it creates a, a Spark SQL query. And then I could, you know, again, process it using Scala, SQL, uh, PySpark or whatever, and then simply run this. So at this point, it's going to just spin up uh, uh, an existing Spark cluster and it's going to just r run a query against that Spark cluster against that uh, against that lake house. So, um, so uh, as you can see, it's extremely easy to kind of load a table uh, into this lake house, create uh, and expose that as a delta table and be able to query it without um, going through any of this complicated uh, data connections or anything like that. So it's extremely easy to kind of uh, load it and query it. So that was just a, a, a CSV, CSV file. Similarly, let's say if I have a, a parquet file, I could uh, I could do exactly the same thing and I could also add other parquet files as well. And this is a very simple example, but let's say if you have large volumes of data, you're not going to simply drag and drop. That is just an experience which uh, while we provide it, that's what not you may do with large volumes of data. So what you would uh, do is, is you might wanna, I'm just going back to my, my lake house here. You might just, uh, you might, uh, create other um, maybe um, processes, more maybe advanced data processing, such as data flows or data pipelines, uh, et cetera. So, so far we looked at simple ways to upload data to a lake house. In a complex data uh, engineering environment, you may need to bring in data from various different data sources. You may want to apply transformations. So, when you come into the lake house, you, you see a few different options to bring in data or get data in your lake house. So there is this option of data flow. There is an option called data pipeline, uh, and then oh, notebook is something which I guess you're all familiar with, and short shortcut is something which we discussed. So, so what are data flows? I mean, data flows uh, were available in Power BI. It's a pure self-service cloud-based um, data preparation technology, and um, and then data pipe pipeline is based on Azure Data Factory. So let's just go in uh, to deeper in uh, how do we bring in data using the new data flow. So when I come into this new data flow uh, uh, interface, it's very similar to uh, what you have seen before, uh, maybe earlier if you have played around with the uh, idea of, of, uh, of Power BI, right? So in Power BI, we had something very similar. So I can actually come in here and get data from uh, from various locations, I could simply let's say if I want to import uh, uh, import a text or CSV file, I could de do that as well, right? Uh, I can come in here, upload a file, you know, and browse to a location, and then you know choose a file, or maybe I could just come in here and then uh, import from any any different data sources here. Uh, as well. So uh, what I would like to do is really go in and, 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 and get data from uh, an old data data source. So I'm just going to go in and then um, go to a specific old data data source uh, within, uh, uh, let me just pull up the, um, the link to that and look at some of the old data data sources. So if I come into my old data link, it's going to ask me for um, the old data data source. So I think I have a, a, a public or data uh, in, uh, data source, uh, which is this Northwind data source. And 
right now, uh, you know, it's just anonymous. I can anyone can access this data. So I'm just going to click next and then it's just going to connect to that data source and then try to bring the data. So as you can see, it actually demonstrated showed all the data here and I'm just going to get customer data and orders data here. And then uh, click create. So as you can see, you know, we've made it extremely easy. It's this, this is very similar to the Power BI kind of experience which you have used to before. So we're kind of combining that self-service Power BI kind of experience with the advanced data engineering experience all into one single product. So now that I have this data in here, so I can do certainly like a lot of you know data uh, transformations here. So if I come into um, this home and then like different uh there's actually a whole bunch of different options here with respect to uh you know doing advanced editor uh, from the advanced editor you can do data transformations you can merge queries you can append queries uh, and there's, there's a lot of things uh which you could actually do here so uh so now i'm just going to go in and then uh, uh turn on a few options here uh, so that I could uh, get a better view of this power query uh, ribbon. So if I go to the options here, and then if I wanna, uh, I wanna ensure that my, the column profile, column details, and some of these options are actually enabled so that I get a better view. So once I do this, um, so essentially what I wanted to do is basically get a better view of the data. So uh, as you could see here, you know, it actually started uh, showing uh, the, the, you know, a, a visual view of, of, the, of the columns. Uh, idea of copying data using the data flow. Uh, let's take a look at the other aspect around data pipeline. So data pipeline is very similar to what you've been used to with Azure Data Factory. So I'm just going to create a quick data pipeline here. I'm just going to um, uh, quickly uh, create. As you can see, it's very very easy to to create any uh, any um, pretty much um, any of these artifacts uh, in. Uh, in um, in fabric, you know, it's very similar to the self-service experience. So as you can see, I can you know uh, create choose a data source and then choose a data destination. I'm just going to go back here and cancel, and, and then you can uh, obviously uh, you know bring in any kind of data sources uh, from here. So I'm just going to go to this particular experience where I want I can copy the data. So I'm just going to add. Uh, add this to the canvas. So I think this is a very similar experience as, as you've been used to uh, in Data Factory. So uh, I'm just going to go to um, the source data, and in this case, I'm just going to copy uh, a, a data from uh, a, an, an external data source here, and I'm just going to create uh, a new connection here, and then I'm just going to say it's going to be uh, blob storage. Um, just uh, I'm just going to type in blob storage here and click continue. So uh, now I can actually connect to any any kind of blob storage, uh, and I'm going to bring in. I, I got already a connection set up. I'm just going to use that here, and then connect to that sample data source. So uh, this just made a connection to that um, source data uh, source data set, and now I'm just going to simply um, provide a container name. Uh, which is uh, in this case it's sample data and then uh, the directory name and uh, the file name which I want to copy right so uh, this is the the file name which I want to kind of copy from that that folder and then uh, in the destination I'm just going to um, uh, just to this is where I'm actually going to copy it to the lake house so uh, I'm just going to choose the the lake house uh, which which I just created just now, and then I'm just going to uh, I just need to say that the root folder for this is files. Like as you've seen before, that is both files and tables directory. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to uh, copy to the files location, and then further I I might do processing later to uh, uh, to, uh, to to further process the data as I like it, right? And the, the data format has to be binary here because it's it's parquet. And uh, I think I have pretty much did everything. And then if I click run, it's supposed to kick off 
the process and then starting to copy the data. So uh, it's just starting to run the pipeline. Uh, it's already completed. It's it's actually it says it's completed here. So um, uh, I, if I now go into my my lake house, right, I should be able to see that that folder. Uh, with that data right here. As you can see, the WWI raw data is actually available uh, in this. So it's as simple as this to kind of copy the data. Again, nothing new here. It's very similar to your data factory kind of experience. Uh, but but the, the power here is that, you know, if you're a data engineer, you can use data pipeline. If you're more into self-service, you could use the data flow aspect to bring in the data uh, into uh, the, the lake house. So now that we looked at um, copying the data using uh, a data pipeline similar to the experience you had in Data Factory, um, you know what are some of the next steps you do? So typically, right, once you copy the data, you would want to orchestrate it. You know, most probably you might want to uh, go for uh, something like a, a, a notebook, right? In this case, let's say if I were to, um, uh, you know, import a notebook which I already have in my uh, in my PC, um, just uh, uh, you know, I got a couple of no notebooks here, which I could just simply import. Uh, in fact, I've already uh, imported those notebooks, so I don't really have to import it. But that's one way to import your notebooks. So once you have that uh, that notebooks imported, so if I were to look at my um, my my notebooks, right? So you can, uh, so over here. I got uh, a notebook which uh, which I'm which I'm using to create data tables from my uh, 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 create my data tables from the parquet files which I loaded. So I have the ability to create create fa uh, facts and dimensions on that data set, and then being able to load it in the table. So the idea is, so once you have that data uh, come in files in raw format. You process it and make it available in the in the in the tables folder. So in fact, there is this whole. Um, so if you look at the end-to-end uh, -end tutorials here, right? So there's it actually talks about if you look at the lake house tutorial, uh, it talks through how to uh, you know create to like an end-to-end -end pipeline. So in this case, you have uh, a data coming from a blob storage. You came you brought it into the raw storage and then loaded into that table, which is at that point in delta format and queryable. So so you can create like let's say if you want to create a data model like this where you have sales fact and customer as a dimension, date dimensions and all those things. So you would you know first bring in the sales data, customer data, and then you create those dimensions and everything using those notebook uh, experience. And then further you also may want to, you know, once the data is brought in, you uh, initially, right? So you may want to think about how you do the incremental data ingestion. Again, none of this is new because, uh, you know, as a data engineer, you may be already used to, like, let's say, if you work with, um, let's say, uh, uh, you know, Synapse in the past, you know, you may have worked with this in the past. So let me just load. Uh, so now let's say I have processed all this data and I made that available in let's say um, uh, uh, in in my tables so in this case let me just go back directory so typically I might have a bunch of different tables here you know it could be uh, the, uh, the the sales fact table um, customer dimensions and all those things in in a delta format right and then now if I want to query that file, all I need to do is come into the SQL endpoint, create uh, what you call as a SQL endpoint, and then uh, once you once I have the SQL endpoint, I can query the data. So in this case, you know, just loading the customer data, and then I could just simply let's say if I want to create a new Power BI data set or a report, I can simply come into this uh, Power BI uh, report and then start uh, you know simply very easily create visualizations. Uh, on that on that data. So um, uh, give it a second while it comes up. So essentially, uh, what we are seeing here is that that end-to-end -end experience of okay, bringing the data from multiple different locations and being able to uh, do data uh, data engineering as well as uh, self-service data ingestion. Everything is 
all in just one single kind of product and it makes it extremely easy. So, you know, as you can see, and I'm not going to go into a lot of details on how to create this report, but I can simply create the report. So again, just to kind of recap, uh, if you look at the overall lake house concept, which I spoke about, I'd say if you think about, you know, you have data coming from different locations, structured, unstructured, you land that data in a data lake house, in the files folder, you do some kind of transformation using uh, using notebooks or data flows, you might have a medallion architecture where you have a rose zone, a, a bronze uh, or a silver zone and a gold zone, which is more refined. And you, you might want to create like a, um, a you know, um, like a schema like this, right? So basically um, a fact and dimensions, right? And then basically be able to create a report out of that is, is extremely easy. So I think the idea here is a few, uh, overview of creating a lake house uh, within uh, Microsoft Fabric. Um, but like I said, just a few things to highlight uh, here. What I really love about it is, is it's like a fully SaaS service. And you know, Microsoft runs one of the largest SaaS service in the planet uh, called Office 365. So we are, uh, I guess Microsoft is bringing in all that experience of, of building that, of building a SaaS service, as well as building a service like Power BI to this analytics area. And what it really means is there's no need to manage servers, complex connectivity, and all of these components seamlessly integrate. And then the, all of the services, right? So you look at Power BI, you got data warehousing, real-time analytics, data engineering, all that in, is in, an, in a single a single platform, which means you know you have the ability to do full self-service, uh, you know, data engineering, like whether it's bringing in a data flow, streaming data flow in a pure self-service manner, or if you're a data engineer and you want to go in and uh, write complex data pipeline or notebooks, right, you could still do that. All of that is in one umbrella. And then I think the big thing is this idea of, of one lake where you don't, you're not really copying any of the data, you're keeping all of the data in one single place, and then the, the performance benefits that's going to uh, bring in with respect to processing large volumes of data without copying without copying the data uh, could be phenomenal. Um, so I so currently the service is in, in preview, so there's going to be uh, you know it's not uh, fully production yet, so there may be a few things are going to change. And it's going to look different. Uh, but if you're a data and AI enthusiast, I really recommend you to come in and then uh, try a free tryout uh, fabric. So there is, if you go to this uh, website, um, it talks about how to start a, a fabric preview trial. It's quite easy to do that. You can just, if you have Power BI instance, you can simply start a trial and you can try it out um, uh, for for a spin. So. Um, that's it. Uh, thank you so much and hope you enjoy this video and hope you try out uh, Microsoft Fabric.